Life Rhythms with Ryan Sky. Observing the world around me, looking inward, trying to make sense of it all. One day when they find my bones in the ground, whoever they are will say, look what we found, a historical find. It's a relic of time and they'll never attest that I don't know my mind. And Welcome to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I'm your host, Ryan Sky. This episode is brought to you by Mixillary.com. I'm excited to have Mixillary on as a sponsor personally because Mixillary is all about helping facilitate connecting people who are looking to hire a remixer. It's a platform that you can use to find and hire someone to remix your song. And why that's so important is because anybody can go online and you can search and you can see music producers, you can search for remixers, you can hire somebody, but it's like, how much do you pay them and who should you hire and what genre should you choose? And with option overload, it's it can be a little overwhelming to figure out what's the best use of your money. Because what it comes down to is remixes are marketing tools. A remix of a record will get that record in front of a larger audience. It will get that record played in venues and areas like the gym or a club or a you know, car or a fitness studio, places that maybe your original song may not be appropriate for. So it is an important marketing tool, but then who remixes it is important because... The, the, first of all, the quality of the remix, and also do they have, maybe they have their own audience that, that's gonna discover this remix. Maybe they have a following. Maybe they have a radio show. Maybe they have, maybe they tour and they'll be playing it out live. These are all sorts of things that are important. So Mixillary is a service that will help match you with the best remixer for your budget. So check out Mixillary.com for more information on this. Life Rhythms is a radio show that revolves around my personal growth journey. As a DJ and a producer, I spent a lot of my time observing the world around me, looking inward, trying to make sense of it all. I've been doing it in song form, and now I do it on my radio show. Every episode of Life Rhythms, we feature one guest and one song or album, and I choose topics related to the songs for us to talk about during the episode. I'm excited for today because my guest with me is Sasha Allen. And Sasha, I discovered Sasha on, I think it was on Instagram. I saw a video of Sasha performing the song Bones. You heard a little bit of Bones coming into this. That was that was the song that I first heard. I wanted to have Sasha on today. And we're going to talk to Sasha about being a trans singer-songwriter, um, being newly signed to a record deal, working on an EP, your love life, um, where society is at right now, you, kind of the conversation that's happening around trans and and the drag queen story time, right? A lot, lot of ground to cover. A lot of ground to cover. <laughs> Our own personal experiences, how we relate to each other. And, and, and we're going to hear a couple songs. We're going to go into some of the meaning behind the songs. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to dive into all of that with Sasha Allen here on Adobe Radio. We're the same... We're the same We're the same We're the same Welcome back to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I'm your host, Ryan Skye, Adobe family. I'm excited today because my guest with me is Sasha Allen. And I, I, I didn't discover Sasha Allen. The internet discovered Sasha mm -hmm. Allen. But I maybe I'm late to the party, but I saw a video that Sasha had had posted online. It was it on TikTok? Yes. Yep. And you're singing a song Bones? Bones, yes. Original. Original. So yep. I saw you singing this song and I was like, I have to have you on the show. And then I had the idea of having you perform which we're going to do a little bit yes. here. And this is a first for Life Rhythms. We've never, we've never had uh, like a, an, a live acoustic performance on air. I'm so excited. We're, we're happy to have you. I'm honored, to, I'm honored to be the first live performance. Yeah. I'm really excited. So listeners, we have Sasha Allen on as a guest today. We're, um, he's going to perform a song, but we're also going to talk about the music, the inspiration behind it, Sasha's career, what's happened, because things you, you like, going viral and yeah. some cool stuff is happening for you. So I'm, yeah. I'm really curious to, to talk, to dive into it. I'm so ready. The song you're singing is Bones? Bones, yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's, can we hear some of it? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Is there anything, do you want us to just listen and take from it what, like where our mind wanders or do you want to tell us ahead of time? Like what, what how would you I like think, this to go? Um, you know, I think, I think it can be, it can be understood with the simple, simple explanation of like, it's a, it's a response to people who feel like they know more about trans identity than trans people themselves. Okay. Um, and I think it was a song that was kind of born out of frustration of seeing a lot of people in the world talk about transness that have no idea about it whatsoever. Um, and, and yeah, I think that it, it does speak for itself. It's a little bit of a story song. It's a little folksy song. Okay, so. I'm, I'm excited to hear it right. again. I'm looking at all the drawings. Yeah. <laughs> so did you do all that? I did. I did do all the drawings. Um, I intentionally got like, this is a pretty, I think it's like a $200 guitar. Okay. Because I wanted to be able to draw on it and do little paintings on it. Yeah. So that's why I got it. It's a little bit of, it's a weird guitar. It's like a little bit of a conversation starter. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it kind of, it's giving me like Keith. Yes, totally. Yeah. Herring, Keith Herring, 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 yeah. You know what? I was DJing last night. Mm hmm and a guy walked into the club and he looked like Keith Haring last really? night. And I, I, I was like, I know him, I recognize him. And then I realized like, oh, he looks like Keith Haring. Obviously it's not yeah. him, <laughs> you know, cause he's not- Keith Haring's the best. He's so, his art is so good. Yeah. Obviously I'm inspired by it, but- Your entire guitar is covered in this. I know, I dude, love I it. got all over. One day when they find my bones in the ground Whoever they are will say, look what we found A historical find, it's a relic of time And they'll never attest that I don't know my mind And one day when they find my bones in the earth They will not equate who I was to what I'm worth And they'll find your bones from the same frame of time and they'll treat your bone just as they've treated mine We're the same We're the same We're the same We're the same And one day when they come across my remains They won't consider assumptions you've made they will see me, not the things that you say They will put up my bones in historic displays And I'll be a symbol of what it all means to be human To know the earth infinitely And your bones are there too We're both works of art It's ironic The people can't tell us apart We're the same We're the same we're the same We're the same And bones like the ones in me Been here for centuries Waiting on you To uncover your empathy And when you complain About my puzzling ways There's a million me Turning around in our graves We're the same We're the same We're the same We're the same And one day when they find my bones It'll be far in the future 40, 23 or so Worried about me I don't think that you noticed it By then the archaeologists are all transgender socialists and It'll be determined on the hill where you died That in terms of history you were way off on the wrong side But I will forgive you with kindness, grace, and elegance And dance for eternity with your stupid right-wing skeleton <laughs> Yes Yeah Thank you. Yeah yeah Thank you so much Yes Wow, I, I'm like, I had all of these emotions going on. Like, it was all positive stuff, and I felt like a proud parent. And I was like, just listening, I, I reminded of why I wanted to have you on the show, just hearing your voice. 
Thank you. The the writing, the message behind it, and the I love the tone of your voice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. So this song, when did you write this song? I wrote this, oh my God, it was literally like probably a month ago. Oh, really? I, yeah. I wrote, oh my I wrote God. it very recently. I was, um, I was just, I love folk music and I kind of grew up with a lot of folk music. Um, my dad is, he's also a singer songwriter and he does a lot of folk and a lot of bluegrassy type of stuff. And I was, I was just listening to folk music as I do. I love old folk music. Okay. And, um, the reason why I love it so much too is because I feel like a lot of the times there's a societal or political message attached to it. Yeah. And I sat down to write and it kind of like that song poured out of me in like 30 minutes. And I was like, when it pours out like that, that's how you that's know. a good sign. Mm-hmm. And I love when that happens. And so, um, and I think that happened because it's, it's, it's very folky and that's like a genre that I feel very comfortable in. And I feel like, kind of leaves room to, you know, tell a story in a way that's different from pop music, you know? Yeah. Was there something specific that inspired or triggered wanting to write this song? Was there an Um, incident or a moment or? Yeah, I think, I think just in general, kind of like the, you, you can't really get away from seeing our current political climate and like the things that are currently going on and the sort of like sudden movement as, you know, using trans people as the scapegoat in politics. Yes. And like this, it's very, it's bizarre. It is odd. It's so odd. It's so weird. And it's happened all of a sudden. Yes. It's so crazy. It's like, it doesn't make sense. It's not related to anything. And it's, it's frustrating because you, you kind of want to like shake these people and be like, you've never even spoken to someone like me. And I think that too, like the chorus of the song of, um, we're the same is like, I feel like what a lot of trans people are kind of yearning to say to these people who just do not understand them is like, we are simply human beings, you know? Yeah. Uh, When you wrote this song and you put it online, what was, what happened? It totally, it got more traction than I have ever, ever received on any of my music online. I think people really, really resonated with it. I posted it. I think there were three videos I did of it and each one did somewhere around like two to three million views and i was like cool. wow. i was totally psyched about that yeah um and it people really it it really resonated with people and people were like this really helped me or this put what i was feeling into words and that's like the best thing to hear as a writer had you so you had been re- putting music out or doing versions of your yeah, songs yeah, right yep yeah. and did it, was this the first time something's really gone viral yeah yeah i've had things do like you know reasonably well because i i have a tiktok personality and then i have oh what, the what is this personality? yeah <laughs> like kind of like i've always like i started tiktok like three years ago and it's just kind of um i kind of started gaining traction when i was just doing like story time videos and talking about my life and like doing like some comedy stuff okay and um i always kind of i really started tiktok because i was like i want something to use for my music and i want to build mm. an audience so i did that and so Um, there is sometimes a disconnect when you have that following that knows you for something yeah, and then you're posting your music, which is very different. Oh, I know about this. It's it's very different because I'm like me posting a video talking about like something that happened to me versus a very emotional like song that's very intimate. It's like, it's hard to connect. So that was a moment for me where I, I felt like I hit a spot with that where it connected, you know? Yeah. I can relate to this because when I first started my DJ career, like the first half of my career, I'm DJing gay clubs and I did the whole like shirtless DJ yeah, yeah. thing and posting shirtless photos online. And, you know, and like you're picking up uh, followers from your gigs and stuff yes, over yeah. the, the years as my career is growing. But then I start doing the radio show, the podcast. I love deep conversations. Mm-hmm. I love inspirational stuff. And when I first started sharing the stuff online, it, 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 I mean, you know, I could post a shirtless photo and it would get like <laughs> thousands of likes yeah. and then I would post something inspirational or or to what I actually wanted to share and it would get like, you know, whatever, 100 or 200. Yes. And it, at first I felt a little discouraged, but I was like, well, maybe is my audience a mismatch or how does that work? But so with you, like this song, Bones, is this the first time you put a song out that was this vulnerable or how, um, are all your songs yeah, like I, this? I think this song, um, I think... This song, in a way, it's like 
poetic yet very straightforward like you kind very. of know exactly like what you're talking about and i feel like that's and it's catchy i mean yeah. the melody is <laughs> super you. catchy thank you yeah. i think that so i think that like i i think i write very vulnerable music but in a way there's something even more vulnerable when something is more on the nose and just flat out there and i mean like the last verse of that song is that wasn't even i i honestly just like didn't know how to end the song and I just threw it in there as like the archaeologists are socialist transgender people in the year 24. I didn't know how to end the song because I was like, how do oh, I wrap yeah. this up? And I added that at the end and just went with it and people loved that part. And so I was like, huh. All right, I guess that's in the song. So you had established a, a, an audience on TikTok and then you put this out and there was a question you weren't sure if they were going to be into it. So like you were surprised by the, yeah, I think cause it's reaction. like, it's like hard to kind of, like you said, like there's when you build a certain type of audience, there can yeah. be a, like a barrier when you do something different, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, but you were, you were surprised in a good way because of, of the response to it. And so that was a month ago. So what are the, do you have plans? Do you know what you want to do yeah, yet? Yeah, well, I'm this? currently, um, so I'm working on um, an EP right now. Okay, um, good. And it's been in the works. And that's why I, I recently moved to LA because I'm like working on that. And Where are you from? Done. I'm from Connecticut. Oh, really? So, yeah, so big move. It was a big fat move. When did you move here? Did you just move here? Like five months ago. Okay. But it, feel, yeah, it feels like it's been like a month. Like yeah, it flew by. That's, um, that's recent. Yeah, yeah. But I, I wanted to be out here to be, closer to that because i i was on like we talked about i was on the voice and that was i don't even know how long ago like two nearly two years ago oh I yeah can we talk about we yeah. talked off air about yeah this. yeah we talk, yeah right. listeners <laughs> I, I was telling sasha that i had already asked you to be on the show from watch seeing your music mm -hmm. And then once we booked you then i saw you were on the voice and i was like oh wait a second yeah. like <laughs> this is interesting so when when was this? It was a couple years ago. Yeah, it was. I think it was close to two years ago. It's weird because time flew since then. It was it was season twenty one. Oh and my it god, was season twenty one of the voice. They've done that many. Yeah, seasons. I know. It's, and they're still going. Wow. They're they're still trucking along. I think they're now on like twenty three. So wow. it was it was an experience, and it was it was the one, it was the one season where Ariana Grande was a coach, and I Love I went her. on the show with my dad. We were a duo, um, mm. and we connected with her and she's the best and yeah. she just like took people under her wing like i've never seen anybody do in my life i'm so happy to hear that because she gives off that vibe that yeah. she's super sweet and to she's, nurturing she's every, it's like yeah. i'm rooting for her like i want her to be that because yes. it's such a yeah. great energy that she puts forward she's everything like the way she presents herself is like oh my god she must be so nice and the way she truly is is like that times yeah. 100 and she oh, really okay. like she really truly helped people and she helped me so much personally and i am now signed to republic records oh where, wow. which i'm recording my ep under amazing so she was very much a guide in that and she's with that. them as well right yes yeah, yeah yeah how did you do on the show on the show we made it to the semi-finals we were did the, you? yeah we were the last people on team ariana wow um and i remember when we realized we were the last because it's like the show's set up so like the coach wins the show if like their contestant yeah, wins yeah. so like and we made it to the semifinals somehow and we were this little like dinky little folk act doing like simon and garfunkel you know and it was like we against these like powerhouse singers and we were the last ones on the team wow. and we were like ariana like you're not you're not gonna win the voice like we're done and we didn't win but um we came close we I came mean, close came we, to, got, <laughs> got we got far. close we did not think we'd get that far. So that was, it was a nice little surprise. Can you, can you bring us to this moment from Connecticut to here? Like how, what, first of all, what is your earliest memory of music? Oh, my earliest memory yeah. of music. Um, well, I got really lucky because my dad is a music teacher. Um, and so he taught me how to play guitar at a, like a very young age, like six, around six, never gave me like formal music lessons, but just like, gave me everything I needed to learn. And my first musical memory is singing a Joni, my, I'm singing Joni Mitchell. Okay. It was the first song was Carrie by Joni Mitchell, played it on the guitar. And I was a really little kid and I loved Joni Mitchell and I loved anything folk music or country music. Yeah. I loved it, loved it all. And your parents like nurtured you because your dad was already in music. Yes, yeah. I had like, my dad did everything in his power to always make sure that I 
had like any musical knowledge that I wanted access to, which was ex- obviously extremely helpful. Did you always want to get into music or what in what in you was like, I need to go to L.A. Yeah, I need to get out there. I always I was oh, like that's been the consistent dream and driving force of my life since I can like ever remember since I yeah. was like super, super little kid. Always wanted that. Um, and things I, I kind of didn't know how to get there. And like at a certain point, it was like during like the COVID-19 era, I was like, yeah, I had graduated high school. I wasn't in college. I felt like kind of lost with what I wanted to do. And I realized that was right before all of the voice stuff kind of happened. All of that occurred. And I was kind of like, all of these things fell into place and happened. Like I have to go and chase like whatever I'm yeah. trying to do. You know what I mean? Do you feel like the universe is always conspiring to help you? Or do you feel like it's a struggle? It's challenging. I feel like it's crazy. Cause, Cause I really, it sounds like you have a lot of serendipity yeah, happening for you. I think that everything <laughs> is like falling into place, like apt in crazy ways. I mean like crazy, insane. Like literally I remember like talking to my dad and this was like before we had, even done our blind audition on the voice and he was like he was like we are going to sing on stage with ariana grande and i was like can you stop dad because like we're obviously not even going to get that far and like we probably won't even get like a chair turn like can you just stop like can we just like take it one step time and what happened is we end up singing on stage with ariana grande and i'm like i would have never thought that happened so all of this crazy stuff that i would have i would have never dreamed it for myself happened and it's crazy and i got like things that i've been dreaming about since i was a little kid like i'm signed to republic records so i'm like i'm out here like give me the next thing you're here you're doing it like Like, you're you're in it yeah Yeah. i'm in it it sounds like your dad doesn't have a lot of limiting beliefs like i I hear a lot of dreaming big and and for a lot of music artists they don't have that that luxury they they kind of have to deprogram yeah being taught maybe the opposite of like oh that's difficult are you sure you want to do that like how you you know maybe you should go and and for you like what a blessing it's totally it's totally a blessing it it really is because going to like my dad is a very he's a very spiritual and cool he's a very cool guy and like going to my dad for some sort of advice or if i was stressed out or i'd be like dad i know that i want to do music and i know the career that i want i don't know what to do and his advice would always be something like it's right it's right there in the palm of your hand. You have it. It's right there. Just wow. go walk through the door. And so that's like Dad, that's a very unique Dad. I know that's a very like Ye- zen unique father experience, but it's that definitely helpful. And he is he still in Connecticut? He is still in Connecticut, yes. Okay. Yeah. And and you're out here now. So you're working on your EP. Um I would love to talk more about bones. I I want to yes, get into this totally, song. Totally. The lyric lyric wise, let's I don't have the lyrics in front of me, but Totally. Do you have them? Get them. Yeah? Them. Oh, that'd be amazing. Let's see if they're <coughs> right. They might be, you know, I turn off autocorrect on my phone, so they might be, they might be like unreadable, but let's see. What's wrong there? I gotta search my notes. Oh my God, I have so many notes. Oh my God, I actually don't think I have them because I think I wrote them on my computer. Okay. This is horrible, but I do remember them. Well, yeah, you but just yeah, sang yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> I know them up here. Let's let's go through some of the lyrics yeah. that stand out to you. Yeah. Um, like, what are some? Of, what are some? Of, yeah, that stand yeah, out. Yeah, I think. Um, let me think. Well, first of all, where did the idea of bones come from? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very. Um, so, like, it's really based on the idea that a, a, a lot of trans people have experienced this sort of conversation or like witnessed it before. Of there's this talking point that's like yeah you can say you're this and say you're that but when they dig up your body and whatever Mm. however many years and they find you they're gonna identify your bones as female and it's this bizarre weird (laughs) frankly a little bit creepy like why are you talking about my skeleton that is like type of talking point and it's very it's bizarre and it's weirdly it's a common talking point to kind of prove like the last resort of conservatives of proving like, well, no, because to your core, you're actually Biology this way. Or yes, or totally. And so it's like it, people are are very trans people are very familiar with that talking point. And so it's kind of based on the songs based on like the the ridiculousness of that and how honestly stupid the talking point is. But also the fact that it doesn't 
It just doesn't matter. Like, none of it matters. I won't be around when they dig up my skin. I don't care. I won't be here. I'll be somewhere else. I don't know where I'll be. I won't be there. Yeah. You know? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. And so, and we are all, like, the same. We're all just... Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that as well. Because you talk about their bones. You kind of flip it on them, right? Yeah, I do. I do. Because it's like your your bones will look... will, will, Will just be the same. Like, we will both be dead in the ground and we will be skeletons and at that point like what is like what is the like i think it really the core meaning of the song is like we are all just human beings who live for 70 something yeah. maybe 80 years and we end up in the ground and like the future that you're talking about like you'll be there too they might not even find your bones like they'll find mine and like oh they, I, you know what i mean i love <laughs> that you talk about being historic yes yeah being yeah, in, a, yeah. in a museum yes yep yeah, yes and how I will be displayed in a museum, my bones, and they will be displayed right next to me, and we're both works of art. Oh, and, so, and in a way, yeah, it's like, I remember yeah, the, this yeah, now. The song is like it's it's weird because I like this because at first I'm thinking I, I like that you're referring to yourself as special, mm-hmm. but then I also love that you're referring to them as special. Yeah, you're not saying like, well, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be in a museum, and you're I'm gonna, cool one. You're, you peasants <laughs> are gonna be, you know, I don't know, I don't yeah. even know, but it's kind of the song is like it's there's there's definitely an energy to it that's kind of like a middle ground bridge of like kind of like asking the people who feel that way and like transphobic people to like understand it and understand that like we're not so different yeah you know just to to get each other a little bit more i mean like if we could just i always think like with transphobic people if we could just sit down and talk it would probably things would be a lot different but a hundred percent and if trans it is the challenge is there aren't as many trans right as yes. because I one of my best friends is trans, um, and that's had I I, I feel like I understand so much yes. more because yeah. of our friendship. Yeah. Before we met, I didn't really know understand yeah. that much, and me being gay, same kind of a thing like with the Harvey Milk mm-hmm. legacy of him encouraging people to come out. Yes. And saying like if people just know a gay person, if it's a family yeah. member or a friend or a coworker, like it just starts to change it, yeah it totally changes and that everything. I, definitely how is with trans but there's not as many right yeah and it, it makes it hard for people I mean, to know and i have a lot of i think too like sympathy for people who probably wouldn't feel sympathy for me but like someone who's living like in some rural state and they've never met a trans person and they're just like a blue collar worker dude who's like this makes no sense because i'm like i totally get why you feel like it would make no sense i mean like it's hard for me to explain it in a way that makes sense. And like, I'm the one experiencing it. And so I feel like understanding and accepting trans people is honestly less about understanding it and more about seeing this like common humanity and life experience that we all share. And that like, we have such a limited time to just be happy. You know what I mean? Like, let's all just be happy. If it's not hurting anyone. That's the thing is that that's what I'm thinking right now Mm -hmm. is like, what, what is the issue? Yeah. Because, what are trans people doing? Nothing. And there's the whole like storyline of the like indoctrinating the children, which is just not real and not happening. And so it's like it is also frustrating when you're the the transphobic talking points right now are also things that are just not real. And so how do you, how do you even like debate that? Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah, I think it's weird because if we all came together and discussed it things would probably get smoothed out. You know what I mean? If everyone knew a trans person, things could be better. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder about these talking points. Because it's this, and then it's also the the drag queen. Yes. Re- the, what is it, the reading? Yes, like the, it's, the, it, the, like the drag story queen time. story times. Yes. yes, and it's like, they, they've almost like... That's a shocker to me. Yes, that's... It's that's surprising. Real, the it's the really trans crazy. hasn't surprised me. Yes, yeah. Um, but the, that, that surprised There's me. There's a hyper focus on drag queens, and I feel like it's... Be- <laughs> I feel like they're kind of like mixing the energy of like, okay... Like they see trans people as like a woman dressing up as a man yeah. and they see drag queens as like, a you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like they're kind of they interlock in like a way. But it's like it's the the drag queen thing has been so bizarre to me. It's insane. And I'm, they're 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 more obsessed with like drag queens than any gay man that I know. You know what I mean? Like they're so obsessed. Yeah. Just watch RuPaul. They're so obsessed. They're so into it. It's so crazy. And they've obviously like never been to a drag show either like just obviously you know yeah that's true in terms of like what the experiences is, is like yeah. and they, they always bring it up about the children yeah i'm like i went 
I'm not seeing it like like it's it's just it's crazy. And they all they use the children thing as in the indoctrinating children as like the scapegoat. What was your first like? Let's just let's put like a little bit of an anecdote on it in terms of like, am I gay because I was indoctrinated? Like, no way. Yeah. Because when I think about, OK, when was my first drag show? OK, picture this. I was 21. Mm -hmm. I was I had a girlfriend. <laughs> I wasn't out yet. I was in I, I was in college. Show. Uh, for <laughs> I was go I I was in school for musical theater, mm -hmm. so I was on the on my oh way. <laughs> um, but I was in the conservatory getting a BFA in musical theater, and in one of my classes, it was acting for, uh, singing and it was acting for musical theater. So we had mm -hmm. to sing a song, but it was all about the acting of the song. Yeah, and the assignment that the teacher gave us is every kid in the class, we all had to perform the same song, but the circumstances of the acting. We had to choose something that was like the most uncomfortable for us. Okay. And as soon as she said that, I immediately thought about doing it in drag. Like that was the most un uncomfortable yeah. thing. And I was like, shit, <laughs> I have to do it in yeah. drag. Cause that's did the you whole, do it? I did it. That's amazing. So I'd never been to a gay club. I was, I had a girlfriend. I was in the closet. I never did drag. And here I am. So that whole activity, my girlfriend, Preparing for the performance in the class, my, I borrowed her her high heels. <laughs> she taught me how to walk in the shoes. And then I went to a drag show for literally for research because mm -hmm. I'd never been to a drag show. I'm like, yeah. well, if I'm going to do drag, I need to see it. And you were like mind blown. So the first time <laughs> I'm walking into a gay club to see a drag show, I'm with my girlfriend to do research for my class. <laughs> and I, I see the show and it just was like, it totally, it was very, I don't know. I probably had all these feelings yeah I'm, definitely, I'm it was probably emotionally overwhelming it was so long ago that i yeah but i definitely was like overwhelmed and i and i and in my drag name what was it chick fil <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most homophobic drag name yeah i love chick fil a and she, I had, love it. she had like I um fire engine red hair that's so good um one of the notes i got in the class when i did the performance which i thought was interesting was a teacher said to me that I, she's like, you don't need to um, play like you're a, because obviously I'm trying to be a girl. I'm dressed yeah. in drag. But she was trying to tell me like, you don't need to like show us that you're a, a woman. Yeah. Just be. Just be the, oh, the woman. You know? Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> and and I, I'm sure I never quite got it. Yeah. You, you know, but I that, that stuck with me. It was like, oh, like I'm trying too hard. Mm -hmm. I need to just be natural. And Cause drag queens, look, they, they're effortless. Yeah. So cool. They're yeah. So cool. Yeah. I love a good drag show. So I'm curious. That's my my story. What? When was your first drag show? My first. It was like really recent. Although I, because I I'm tw I'm 21. So literally, it's wow. like things just started happening. So like I literally went to my first drag show when I was 21, okay. and it was literally after I moved to LA. But I was very into since like a sophomore year, very into like drag and like RuPaul and like all of it and very like fascinated by it. Like the, I remember the first time I watched RuPaul's Drag Race and I was like, I love this. And like, I want to do yeah. fucking drag. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but. And isn't it interesting? I, it's cool to see how the show's evolved. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. listeners that don't watch the show, the first, I don't know how many seasons, like trans, I don't, they didn't allow yeah, they trans drag allowed. queens to compete. Yes. Yep. And that was like, I remember knowing that and being like, I don't like that. And they had a lot of like little jokey things on the show that they yep. didn't realize were offensive. Like yes. when RuPaul would come on and they called it Shemail. Shemail, yep. Right. Yeah, there it's, was a lot of stuff. There was a lot of things. Like, I'm surprised that it was like they were doing it. For like that they're long. sitting down, like, oh, this is cute. Yeah, let's call it Gmail. Okay, we'll put that in. Like, yeah. But then it took well. years of pushback, yeah. and then they finally started letting some trans contestants on, and now they've had a like, two winners. Yes. Yeah. Because like, I don't know. Like literally, like I remember like watching it, just being like, I totally want to. I want to do drag. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who wouldn't want to do drag? Like totally. But like I, that whole. I just I have I have such an appreciation for it, and every time I do see a drag show now, which like I love hamburger Marys, love <laughs> hamburger Marys, I love like a for the hamburgers goblet. or for yeah. the Marys, <laughs> for the Marys. <laughs> <laughs> I love like a the big goblets and like love just seeing a drag show. It's the best. It's literally the best. Nothing compares. You know, it's it's like kind of like a, it feels like an American pastime. Yes. Yeah. And and kind of like it's kind of odd to verbalize that, but like it really does. It's like football. 
Yeah. It's like you're I like I'm root like I'm rooting for them while they're dancing. Like I'm I it gets me so hype. I'm like jumping out of my seat. It's so joyful to be out and having drinks and you're with your friends and you're watching this performance and they're always doing songs that you love. Yes. Whether it's like and, and maybe they're not songs. Yeah, and it's usually like a celebration of American culture, right? Yes. Yes, and I brought like literally my friend Maddie who's straight. She's a straight girl and she was visiting LA. She was staying with me and we went to a drag show and she was like, she'd never been. And she was like, this is incredible. Like, I love it. Like, I want to go back there every day. (laughs) Like, there's like a joy that emanates from it. It's the best. It's just the best. Yeah. So recently was your first show and you're clearly obsessed. Yes. Oh, I love it. Clearly a regular. I can't get enough. I like just give them my money. Yeah. I like run back to the ATM like four times. Yeah. And when did did you... Uh, come out as trans or realize you were trans um i so i in what was it it was summer before sophomore year of high school okay so weird weird time for that <laughs> you know what high I mean? it was like it was weird and i had just come out as like summer before that i came out as like bi and i was like a bi girl and then started dressing like way more masculine and yeah then ripped the band-aid off i did it with an instagram post so my entire school knew at once because okay. I was like, I want it coming from me. Very Gen Z of you. Yes. It's t- oh my God, it was so Gen <laughs> I think it was like an aesthetic. Both were like aesthetic <laughs> images too. Like I stuck with my Instagram feed for like yeah. my dramatic coming out post. But I was like, I don't want anyone else talking about like this. This is, has to come from me. Did your dad know or did he learn as well? Um, <laughs> <laughs> my parents My parents knew in advance and I'm, okay. I'm very lucky because I have like, like my parents are so like liberal everything and I, I have like a very gay family i have a big family and so like just statistically like we got some gay okay. people in there yeah. you know what i mean yeah so it's like i was very i was accepted by my family and even like my grandma's like at like everybody was re- i was very lucky in that department which a lot of people aren't and i don't know how they even do it because it's so hard but mm. you know yeah okay so we can't speak for all of society, but at least between the two of us, we're two for two in terms of like, neither of us went to story time and then became yeah. trans or gay. Yes. I didn't, like, I didn't even know. Or like, went to, right? I didn't know what it was. Like, I didn't have <laughs> words for what I felt growing up. You know what I mean? I had to like come yeah. to the conclusion myself. So I'm like, who indoctrinated me? Like, who did? That's like, the where thing. Was it? It's like, yeah. Who? I grew up, I didn't, I didn't have any, any role models mm-hmm. growing up. Nobody. Ellen. Yeah, yeah, literally. And I remember Ellen had her show and then she came out and there was all that backlash. And then my dad made comments, not great comments. Mm -hmm. And here I am, you know, he didn't know that I'm I'm gay. I didn't know, but I kind of knew. But here I'm getting these signals of like the people around me that I love and I feel close to are saying they're making fun of someone who's coming out as gay. And that happened multiple times and it kind of sends signals of like, I'm unsafe here. And yeah. and I, for the record, I want to say like, I'm not unsafe with my family. My family's yeah. amazing. They accept me. They love me. Like they've embraced me. But as a kid, you don't know that. Yes. Yeah. As a kid, I didn't know how they were going to respond. Yeah. I just see little comments and I think like, ooh, am I safe? So maybe I don't want to say I, I wasn't safe. I just, I questioned. I didn't yeah. know if I was. Because you don't know people's reaction. You, yeah, you, you know don't know how I mean? they're going to respond. Because even with my parents being like, very like my very accepting and like liberal household but it's like i didn't even really know like what being trans was so i'm like i don't know how anybody's gonna react to this like you only see like especially when i was growing up like there's only there was only like glimmers of it in the media like even like caitlin jenner only came out like once i was like basically a freshman in high school so like in my formative years it was literally all going off of an internal feeling and like shares son and like that's it like yeah that's all it was you know what i mean so it's like where was the media where did the vocabulary come from for you where did you first learn that it was a, 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 a um a i thing? i knew someone growing up who um who was older than me and i went to school with who transitioned and that's when i remember the moment where i was sitting at like my kitchen table like with my parents and like this thing got brought up and it was like said out loud, like transgender. And I was like, You're like mm? I was like, whoa, I was like, well, now that's something that I have to deal with. And it, I think it made me re- knowing what it was made me very much repress it more. And I tried very hard to not be trans. Mm. God, I tried. I mean, I was straightening my hair. I was wearing I was wearing the feminine clothing and like all of it and denying everything and denying it to myself. So it's like you can't change it, you know? Yeah. 
How do you feel now? I feel great. I feel like really like it's, I think a lot of trans people out there are like, oh my God, like how do I get through this absolute uncomfortable hell? Because it really sucks. But like when you come out on the other side of it and you can like look at yourself and like for the first time, I feel like since I turned like, like turning like 20 and onward, like I'm for the first in my life, I can look at myself in the mirror and be like, okay like you're looking good yeah you know what i mean and like yeah i never had that because you, you don't feel comfortable in your own skin you just want to like crawl out of it so i think it's i feel good now and i really hope that other trans people like realize like it's worth hanging on for that feeling you know yeah okay we're gonna take a quick break cool adobe family we're gonna be back we'll take a quick break and i'll be back with sasha your music and more of this conversation amazing all right we'll be right back Gifted with innocence, blessed by your time, you feel lonely at home. Let me take you to mine, I hate waiting with patience as much as I hate your goodbyes. Welcome back to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I'm your host, Ryan Skye. Adobe family, we are back with our guest today, Sasha Allen. And you're gonna perform another song for us. Yes, I'm this. This song is called "Illustrations of Me." And I, I love that we're gonna do this because, our so far in the conversation, well, with Bones, you talked about how you're, we're all the same, right? Yes. And yep. so this time around, I wanna, I wanna know more about that side of you. Yeah. You know, like the part of you that we can relate to. Yes. And so I asked you off camera about what other songs you have, and you said, and and also I'd be, I'm interested in talking about like your personal life yeah. and all that fun stuff. And so you had suggested this song. Yes. Yeah. I feel like it's a, it's a very, um, it's a very intimate song. It's okay. Very just, um, it's very, it's I've, I'm in a relationship. I'm, I have a girlfriend, and we've been together for. Four years, about. I thought you were going to say four weeks. No. <laughs> like, like, no, four years. Like right me. when Bones was <laughs> yeah. posted, she DM'd me. No, I found her like a week ago. <laughs> no, we've been dating for four years, um, and I think she's like the best, and she's she's great. And so so this little song, I think I wrote this like not very, I'm not very long into dating her at all, but none of it has changed. Okay. So it's very, it's a human experience. What's it song. called? Illustrations of me. Okay. I love you in winter, bracing the cold. You got snow in your lashes from walking back home, little angel. I miss you all morning. Where did you go? I love you in grocery stores, taking your time or your steam on the windows and bottles of wine or your brown paper packages left for me tied up with twine. And I've never felt like a stumbling fool till I melted in doorways with you. Afternoons in your company has it in touch, but I'll take off my shirt and I'll dance with you, love. It's a much needed coming of age. Filled with fatigue, and you tore out the pages, replace them with your illustrations of futures. I'll choose any door that you do. I'll choose any door that you do. Gifted with innocence, blessed by your time, you feel lonely at home. Let me take you to mine, I hate waiting with patience as much as I hate your goodbyes. Aching for life by your side, it's our game. Every memorable moment replays on your face in the light of projectors. I'll beg you to rewind the tape. And I've never felt like a gullible fool till I sat in the church pews with you. And we'd bask in their stairs with our matching black hair And the heels on your new leather boots It's a much needed coming to terms 
permission to leave all the bridges I've burned and replace them with your illustrations of me. Why should I worry what people think about me? They can laugh and think they're better off without me. They can laugh all they want. I have all that I need. I've been talking to God and he spoke back to me. I see you in the windows of cars passing me and your voice in my ear is like magic to me used to be filled with spite something happened to me you replaced it with your illustrations of me i only care what you might think of me now Damn. Thank <laughs> That's you. That's amazing. <laughs> that thank was you. good. Great. Thank wow. You, thank you. Jesus. I'm just like taking in all the lyrics as you're singing. Like, wow. That's a very it's a very honest one. You know, <laughs> it feels very yeah. like it's it's very very real and raw and based on it I, I, it's honestly and I feel like a lot of my songs turn out this way is like it's a every lyric is like something that is like it genuinely happened in front of my eyes which i love because i feel like it paints a picture but there it is <laughs> it's beautiful thank you when you played it for her what was the reaction and where were you i was i remember she was um i think she was like at her parents house or something and i was home and i was like one o'clock in the morning and i had just finished watching breaking bad like the last episode <sighs> i love Breaking so bad. good i love breaking bad but I, I don't know why i felt inspired and i started writing it and i texted her and i was like I feel like I like I really like the song I'm writing, and she was like, she's like, well, let me hear it, and I like send it to her, and she was like, that's the one, like you killed it, like this is your best song ever. Did she's, she she's know much, who it was about? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very, she would know. It was like it's all very real, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, but yeah, she's she's huge supporter of mine and everything. She's like the best. Can you tell us about the illustrations? What are the illustrations? I think I like I I very much like met her at a time where I was like very like very much weighed down with insecurity that I feel like had built up over the course of my life um and so I feel like illustrations of me is she, she really helped me in seeing myself in a way that I'd never seen myself before which was like positive and capable and like not being weighed down by what other people say or think about me and so it was, it's kind of about seeing like the song obviously talks about seeing her through my own eyes but also kind of absorbing the way that she sees me and having someone see you in a mm. way that you don't see yourself oh right because I, I remember you mentioning other people yes yeah and kind of like that doesn't matter yeah all i care about is like how you yes see me. like what people think about me and uh, i only care what you might that's yeah. really nice can you do you have the lyrics can we look at I them actually, or do you want to go I over do, i think i do have the lyrics okay I think I do. My notes are just like an absolute mess all the time. <laughs> Come on. You gotta have it. I gotta have it. Dude, I don't know where all my notes went. Like, I really, I don't know if I even have this. That's okay. I don't know if I do, but... T one, tell us some of your favorite lyrics, because um, I, I want to yeah. get into the song deeper. And deeper. Yeah, one of like, I think one lyric that was like... um um one is i'll there you go it's i'll take off my shirt and i'll dance with you love and i think and that was like based on like this real moment where we were like in like the kitchen of like her college apartment and it's like this very like it was such like this fairy tale like honeymoon phase like christmas lights in like this really drab kitchen and it's like we were just like dancing in the kitchen together and it was after it was like just after i had gotten like top surgery and so that is kind of like the meaning in the line of like i'll take off my shirt and i'll dance with you love and that's just i know that's one of her favorite lyrics because it's so it was like a very real personal vulnerable moment i was gonna you know? ask you is the idea of taking your shirt off and dancing is that kind of like a reference of feeling vulnerable or kind of bearing yourself to somebody yeah. being yourself yeah kind of like like being vulnerable with someone for and like almost like comfortable with someone for the first time and feeling like 
like a sense of safety and security. Yeah, I think know? we could all relate to that. Yeah, because totally. even though we may not have surgery, like we all have parts of our body that we're yes. insecure about, yeah. or maybe things in our life that we're afraid to to reveal. Yeah, and so to kind of like share that with somebody, and then and then them accept it and love yeah. you. Yeah, it's like it's very. There's something very freeing about being able to literally just be yourself with someone, you know? Yeah. It's like a very beautiful thing. Yeah. But yeah, and I feel like it's that's it's kind of like, it's very much like the theme of the song because I feel like I was able to kind of let, like through someone else and kind of being encouraged by someone else and seen by someone else, I was able to let go of, like, I mean, even like she literally, like I owe her, the credit for like me even sitting here right now because i remember it was like it i I started doing tiktoks i was like i want to do tiktoks i want to like use it as like a thing to like do i have a career and like do artistic things and i felt like (laughs) like i had people that i would consider my friends at the time that like made (laughs) fun of me and like obviously i'm like obviously it's gonna be like a little cringe like i'm trying to get followers on tiktok like what am i gonna do not be a little cringy like let me do my thing. Like, let me let me do my thing and you yeah. should be clapping for me and cheering me on, not, like, making jokes about me. And I literally wanted to stop because I felt so belittled and insecure mm-hmm. about it. And my girlfriend, Bryn, was like, her response was very, it was kind of life-changing for me. She was like, literally, who cares? Like, what are you talking about? Like, who, like, wh- who are these people that you literally, you care? Like, what, what are they? Like, the, the, the president? Like, who is this? Like, why do you care? Why are you putting so much stock? Yeah, like, what are, yeah, they, what are yeah. they doing? Like, what is, what is, the, why are they controlling everything? And so I was like, you're so right. And so I was going to stop doing it altogether and stop pursuing social media. And that would have screwed me over so bad. Yeah. So I really, I do, like, thank her for that. And literally, even with, like, the voice like we talked about like initially i was like i don't even think it's like worth auditioning like i'm not gonna get on the show like blah 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 and she was like don't be stupid like just audition for the voice like you're literally gonna get on it and she was right and like literally she's she's encouraged me and been with me and moved out uprooted her life and moved to la with me and so she's like she's very supportive and she's always believed in me and she you're young so I'm, i'm gonna assume this is your first it's like like, on long term yes the yes the longest relationship i've ever had yeah and it feels i think the most like because it's like yeah you date people in high school but it's like you're not like living with them and like experience it's like you know what i mean like your mom's driving you to their house like that's like it's not the same so it's like yeah you you've gone through the transition of high school to adult life yes yeah definitely and she's been with you yeah for that yeah i think i've changed a lot over the course of our relationship and I mean, like, she has too, but I think for me, it was, like, very much groundbreaking changes for me, even just personally, which, like, I think made things a lot stronger, or at least showed that it was, like, our relationship is a good thing because those didn't, like, those didn't shift anything. They just made it better, yeah. you know? So what happened to these friends? You don't... These... It's just, like... They're they, off somewhere else. They're off. They're doing their thing, and truly, <laughs> I wish if they're listening to this, which would be so awkward. I'll probably get, like, an angry text. But, like, wish them well. But it was just, like, some sometimes, you know, people have their energy, and it doesn't work. And I just couldn't, like, I had a moment. And it was honestly, like, when I was on The Voice, like, when I was on it, and I was in it, and I was in this reality TV show. Very overwhelming experience, but I was in it. And I was, like, I cannot, like, I cannot give my time of day to people who I feel like don't support me and have done me wrong and, like, I'm it's better off just left like let's leave it and i totally wish you the best i hope you find the happiness you're looking for it's like not at all productive to my journey to be like weighed down by like what is this person gonna think like is this person gonna think i'm like cringe or like doing this or like my art's bad like yeah then i'm not gonna get anywhere like who like what am i doing it for you know what i mean so you know i i think i've i've had a lot of people in my life and gone through a lot of people in my life and it's it's honestly in those relationships did also make me who i am and have given me like material too so it's like it's all it happens for a reason yeah yeah we talked a little bit about this last week i had uh shared about like when i because sky is not my legal last name Mm -hmm. 
And when I was in college and I came up with Ryan Sky, there was a, a period of time where I had like pushback from my peers, my theater, really? my theater peers, where they were they were like, oh, like who does he th- Ryan Sky? Like who does he think he is? But That's- then one of them dressed up as me for Halloween because they're jealous. It's interesting. I don't know. It's like well, I my my idea is that my theory is we have a naturalist instinct to test each other. Yeah. So I think there was a period where they were kind of testing me to see my conviction, but also I think people are, I think people are innocent and they don't realize. Yeah. I think they're they're verbalizing their own insecurities. Totally. Their own limiting yes. beliefs are coming out and they don't even realize it. Yes. Like like I rem- they probably don't even remember they said that stuff to me and here I am talking about it. Yeah. On air because obviously it, it affected me at first. It sticks with you. It I because I already felt vulnerable, mm-hmm. anointing, giving myself a name. Yeah. I felt I felt like nervous about yes. it, and then to have that response kind of, it kind of reinforces it a yeah. little bit. But I just stuck with it. Yes. And and what I had said last week was that for me, um, Ryan Sky represented what I knew, like wh- where I knew I could go and who i could be yes and it sounds amazing thank you rolls off the tongue like what is wrong with those people but compared to like my legal (laughs) my last name schmidt Mm -hmm. so like ryan schmidt was where i was at and sky was where i i knew i could get there sky's the limit yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah, but it was like it represented that gap yeah and it it got me to just like start the journey start the path towards that artist thing yes and so, like is Sasha Allen. Sasha Allen, that's like totally my my birth name. I was everything. wondering about that. Yeah, like just it's straight up. That's just my legal name. My legal name is Sasha Kendall Allen. Wow. Sasha Kendall Allen, and my name was almost. I think my parents almost named me Bridget, which I'm really oh. glad they didn't because I'm really. Hmm. I would. I would have to. That's deal more of with a challenge. That. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would have to do that. And still now I get comments that are like, like people are like, because Sasha is like seen as like a like a female name but also but it's also male it is and in if you go to russia like no one would like look twice i mean i'm not going to russia anytime soon. i would not recommend (laughs) it (laughs) but if i did take a trip to russia maybe with your vr headsets you can go to russia not in person but it's it's a like a boy's name there and so i got i and i also think that it's just like i i don't know i don't think i could ever get used to someone being like like calling me like Tyler or something like I I couldn't adjust in I terms like of Sasha. it being a different name or yeah, I feel like I have a connection to my name like I feel like I'm Sasha and yeah. like my mom calls me like Sashi bear and I'm like what would she call me if like you know what I well, mean well this is something I'd love to talk about I'm interested in this because I I've I've interacted with many trans people mm-hmm. really I guess within the past five five to seven years really moving out here and just being an adult yeah. and it's just and I've I've noticed kind of like a spectrum in terms of um some some people I've interacted with who um, w- would n- not share what their previous name was. Yes, and it's a very like it's it's very personal, and it's you can tell it's like you don't want to touch that. Yes, yeah, you know it's kind of they kind of like don't want to go there. Yeah, and then I and then like um, other people, um, kind of the opposite side of w- one of the girls who does my hair. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like that. She's the complete opposite of that. Yeah, like they're like sharing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's almost like gossiping. Like, yeah. I think she's trans. Yeah. Like she's hiding. Like, oh girl, I can clock you. And and like her her um the the male name is still on the wall with like the license. But I yeah. could just but there's such a freedom with her. Mm-hmm. And even like I don't feel I don't feel like if somebody uh used a, di- a, a a different pronoun, I I just don't I don't feel like it would upset her. Yes, or, yeah. So I that, that I'm curious about that. Why is what is the spectrum? And and where do you fall on it? Yeah, I think there's like, because I know that there are people who, like, I I think my thing personally is like, I'm very, like, in my trans experience, I'm always very, like, like, intent over impact. You know what I mean? Okay. Am I saying it in the right? Yeah, intent. So, like, if somebody, like, I've had people, like. Oh, like, what's the intention? Yeah, like, in some. Like, maybe they use the wrong pronoun, but they didn't mean it maliciously kind of a thing? Yeah, and, like, just, like, being aware of, like, even, like, looking the way I look now, like, I I look male, like, I don't expect people to, like, call me she, but, like, there are times where, like, if someone is aware of the fact that I'm trans, they will just, it's in their brain, and maybe they've never met a trans person, and they slip up and, like, call me she, and I had to, like, in that moment, it feels like, 
it literally feels like I'm being shot because I'm like, oh my God, like someone just called me she. It feels like but, that? Yeah, now, like it so. feels like my like, it's like your stomach drops and your blood runs cold mm. because it's very, I think, and I do think there's a, there's a spectrum of it, I think too, because it's, there's so many different experiences that it's like some, like, so, like for me, like I, I might have like no issue talking about some sort of thing and then another person could have like some deep trauma related to that one specific like, okay. trans topic yeah so it's like and i think like being trans is such a unique experience too so it's like and just even like where you are in the world or like who your family is or mm -hmm. like who you're surrounded by like it all impacts it and so and i think there are people naturally who have to like a tougher skin and like maybe the people who have like really been through it like they're the ones oh, like right. it rolls off their back yeah. like i'm not really sure but i think it and i think it can change with time too like i think i used to be a lot more sensitive to it when i felt insecure in myself because okay. it's harder it, like me being secure now i'm like say what you want you know what i mean like you can't like you can't get me with the trans comment because i'm living and i'm here and like yeah. i'm confident but when i wasn't confident and i was like totally insecure it would like it, those comments would feel like totally different. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. The older I get, the less I care. Yes. What totally. anybody thinks. Yes. Because you're just like, I'm here. Like, this is like, at this point, like, this is my life. Like, what are you going to, and you like, you can't tell me that I like look like a woman. I know that I don't. Like, let's move on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I learned about this in therapy that when people do feel triggered, it's because somebody can only upset you if you actually believe that about yourself. Yes, yes. That's the only time it, it, it hurts. And that's why, like, with, like, your name, like, and people, like, Oh, yes, right. Yes, there it is. Exactly. I felt insecure, insecure about my name, yes. and it hurt because I felt, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Whereas right now, there. if someone made fun of my name, like, I... You'd be like, okay. Yeah, like, I don't <laughs> yeah, care. Yeah, like, you're so like, it's weird. just a name, like, who cares? Yes, yeah. exactly. That's but, interesting. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it has to, that, that, that has to do with that, and the older you get the less you care. You just get more comfy. You know what I mean? But it's like, there's always, there's always going to be people and that's like, people who tear you down. My vibe now, I think is like, I just don't, I don't have the time. I have things I want to do. I beat myself up enough as it is. Like in turn, like I already have yeah. my own issues. I have my anxiety. I get depressed. I don't need like somebody making that work. Like why, do, what joy does that bring me? I honestly started looking at my life like I feel like the past two years, like what, like what is really bringing me joy? Like what is bringing, like what is supporting me in yeah. like my journey, which I sound like I'm doing such like therapy speak, but like- <laughs> It's really, kind of like, like this show is- Yeah, it's, it's like yeah. what is supporting me in my journey? And it's like, it's not people that I'm gonna have to be like, oh my God, am I gonna like post this? Like, like I'm like so embarrassed by this thing that I'm like posting. No, like shut up. Yeah. You know? I think, and I think also you're, you're speaking to coming of age stuff that yeah. a lot of people experience in their own way. Yes. With peers. Yes. Growing up and peers. And even when you're an adult, it can still feel like high school. Yeah. Totally. Like, it's, and I'm in like, it's such a weird age to like early, early 20s vibe. And I'm about to be 22. I'm turning 22 in August. Okay. Um, But it's just like, there's a very weird, like you're coming, you're kind of coming out of a whole different world of like the whole like school and like peer things and like yeah you're like you grow up being like so everybody's insecure and you're starting you're adulting for the first time yes totally right? i'm like i have to like pay my water bill you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah what if i don't remember the password who's gonna pay the bill yeah but like it's so it's like it's every and everybody's on their own journey and i'm sure that there are people who i'm like i don't like that person and they did me so dirty and they probably look back and they're like i was so insecure yeah and so i think we all yeah. are like we're all insecure and like I know that like a lot of like the dudes that like totally harassed me in high school like I know they're up on grinder now you know what I mean yeah. like that's, that's the vibe and so it's like people change and people evolve and we're all just like really insecure you know? <laughs> <laughs> like that's just like that's the final we're just all super we're all just good. going through we're it we're all we're all going through it and then we all like affect each other and make things weird like everybody just needs to like everybody needs to chill yeah and be like I'm, I have issues you know what I mean? That's the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about what you're saying about your, your old friends and also how we were talking about how people, I don't think people really mean to yeah. be that way, but like we should definitely pay attention to how we, what we're, what the words we're using for each other. Like when I first was learning production, 
<clears throat> I had a mentor and he had made some comments to me and he probably doesn't even remember now mm -hmm. that he did. But when I was first starting out, he's older. He's, I don't know, he was like 30 years older than me. Yeah. And he had gold records and he's very talented, but um, he lived in Pittsburgh where I was from. And he kind of, I always got a vibe from him that he was a bit um, jaded. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't get his due. Yeah. And he would make comments about like these young um, bedroom DJs that are 15, like Martin Garrix, mm -hmm. you know, Avicis, and they're, you know, blowing up at 17 years old, 18 yeah. years old. And so when I was starting out, he was helping me, but he would also make little like, he didn't, I know he didn't realize he was doing it, but little like backhanded comments of like, he would literally say like, you're never going to be, you're never going to do this. Like you're never going to be able to beat out these bedroom DJs. Like he had this worldview that he formed mm -hmm. of that. And then he was like, telling me that and that actually stuck with me for years and that's, that's as bad. an insecurity yeah. yep. that i had to like deprogram and get yeah. out of my mind that's bad and i had to like really tell myself counter narratives of like no that's not true that's not true like look this is happening and you you did this did this and did that but that stuck with me for a while that was like a mountain i had to climb yes that will like that will that will stick with you and i feel like the the challenge is like i feel like the only way to like fix that is getting people in your life that are yeah. like that are like i support you yes. and like believe in you and i feel like yes. now like since i'm very glad that i moved to la because i feel like musically i've met people here that like explicitly are like i support you and i believe in you and like i see your dream and what you want to do and like let's like let's get it done and let's I'm like, go I'm like, that's what I need. and i'm like i need that energy in my life yeah. because that is the only way like that i will i want to be like if like if my peak is like literally this moment right now like i just i just want to hit my peak like i don't want anybody holding me back from my peak i don't need anybody getting in my way i want to like die knowing that i fulfilled all of my potential and i didn't let somebody hold me back yeah it's just like weird and insecure about themselves and needs to go to therapy you yeah. know what i mean but it's and it's really beautiful to have interacted with these people move forward and you're just your life is kind of like your testament yes i'm speaking like about you but i'm also kind of projecting yes. myself because it's i'm glad i interacted with these people and i pushed through right yes. and then our lives are our testament and they they're watching they're watching yeah. and actually they're learning from us yeah i've had people message me that were these maybe they made comments or they affected me in a, in, they, in, a, in a way that was holding me back mm -hmm. a little bit but now they message me encouraging and saying that they're feeling inspired yeah. or and it's because you just kept going. Yeah. Because that's like, it's literally, it's just the hurdles. Some people are just hurdles you gotta, you gotta <laughs> get over. You gotta get them out of the way. For yeah. For real. For real. Yeah. And we wish them the best. Yeah. We wish them. We're, we're gonna just write and talk about them in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> they make, they make for good content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make I know they really, honestly, like every negative thing that happens to me, like I'm, I try and look at it like, this is content. This yeah. This is something to write about. This is good. This is material from the universe. Because if if life was all good, like what would what would we make art about? Yeah, being happy and supported by everyone around us. And, and clearly, you have a, a girlfriend that's she's down for you writing about her, right? To yeah, she's totally. She down knows for what she signed up for. She did. Although she's she's incredibly. Well, she encouraged you shy. to sign up. She did. Yeah, and then she joined you. Right? Know, she co-signed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she gets. She has the like final approval of like all my songs. And sometimes she'll be like, she'll be like. No, that's not it. And I'm like, I know, right? It doesn't feel like it's it. She has a good ear. So okay. She has a good ear, even though she's not like musical at all. Yeah. She's like a numbers marketing girl. Okay. But you need that outside perspective. Yeah, a you definitely bit. do because yeah. you're so close to your own work. Totally. And like we've written songs together. She's like a great songwriter. And I'm like, oh, I'm that's like, cute. no one knows this. That's like, super cute. Like she has lines she's written in my songs and she's, she's very, she's shy and she wears huge boots and she's very stunningly beautiful. But but I, I'm like totally like look, at this point I have like one friend and my girlfriend and I'm doing my thing yeah and I'm making my art and I'm like pursuing things and I'm like it's better to have your circle small totally especially in this moment in your life totally yeah like it's better you want to be very very careful with your who you let in your space yes yeah. totally like being very yeah I'm I'm trying to be selective like I yeah. don't want someone and I've honestly like out here like. 
I know there's like there's like LA stereotypes of like people being like so mean, but I'm like I've like met a lot. There are so many nice people out here. Yeah, I feel like I, I've like I've met so many people who are on like the same page of like like have had similar experiences and like outwardly want to support people and yeah. be like you're doing this thing that's so cool like we're all doing things we're all doing this crazy art thing that like, is cool about you know the community I mean? out yeah. here yeah like and it's and i don't get the vibe of like oh my god like you're so like whatever like i have not encountered that yeah so it's been like it's been really good i mean like the people are nicer than they are in like people are so nice out here yeah like, i'm from the east really coast nice yeah. yeah where are you from i so i grew up in pittsburgh oh yeah. and then i lived in new york for seven years uh, we're in new york I lived in Queens. Queen, very cool. Yeah, very Long cool. Island City. That's so dope. Yeah, it was. It was cool. That's awesome. It was very cool. That's like an iconic upbringing, kind of. Yeah, you know I mean? like it was. Queens. It was. Yeah, it was fun. I I came of age in Queens. Like I like my formative years were. It That's actually dope. it's worked out well because I have a a New York work ethic mm-hmm. hustle, mm-hmm. and then coming out here, people are more laid back and chill yes and it, it's kind of nice to have that east coast yeah, drive there's like there's like a chill vibe out here that like you don't find but on you the can east get coast. shit done out here like yes. if you're if you're like totally if you're gung-ho and going for goals and stuff like you're dude there's like people like i just like like this is where the like honestly the reason why i moved here too is like there's just like more people out here that like you can meet that could be like productive in like your journey and what you're doing it's amazing and, yeah like, yeah i don't i mean like what would i have done if i stayed in connecticut who yeah. would i like you know like what are the odds of me like going out and like meeting someone who who would like i would resonate with like musically or yeah. like any like no odds of that no just odds. coming out here you you automatically are putting yourself yes. in contact with so much potential yes i mean like this radio show a previous manager of mine he had a show on Adobe and he had his own radio show and I was in therapy I was in therapy struggling with a breakup learning about myself learning about attachment theory and healing and all that stuff and my therapist was the one that kind of planted the seed of like have you ever thought about having a show Mm -hmm. I was like no (laughs) that didn't even cross my mind I'm like why she's like well you know she said I was picking up concepts quickly Mm -hmm. and I was able to like verbalize them and and t- say them back to her clearly. Wait, that's so dope that she picked up on that. Yeah, and she's like, I just have this feeling that you would be good at this, and that you would enjoy it because your personality, you really like these deep conversations. And mm-hmm. I was like, uh, so I asked my manager, I'm like, is this a possibility? Do you think I could have a show? And he's like, ah, uh. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, he's that's like, so crazy. He's like, if you want to put a, an idea together, we'll put you in front of. You know, the executives, you can mm-hmm. pitch them on it, but he's like, no, no guarantees. So I spent months just thinking through like, well, what would the show be? What's mm-hmm. the format? And like, and then I pitched them on it. We did some pilot episodes and then here we are. But, That's but it was awesome. from moving out here, having a manager like this, you know, it just, it's yeah, so like natural. Things like, yeah. Like I like, I've never like, I went through so much time not having like a manager and then I came out here and I finally had a manager and I was like my god like my life is so <laughs> much easier like i don't like i yeah. can just like and it's like i couldn't really who like the closest thing to me was like new york city and that was like an hour and a half when i was in connecticut yeah so i'm like who am i gonna find yeah and this is just like honestly this is where like and music creatives is. are out here yep when i was in new york one of my good friends she's a songwriter and she's from the bronx and she was uh, the last holdout she was not moving to la she hated <laughs> la she was very Doing There's very so well in the industry, like but that. she's like, I'm never moving out there. I hate it out there. And then she eventually moved out she here. Caved. And when she moved, I was like, oh, damn. Mm-hmm. Like, if she's moving out here, then really there's not much yeah. for like, us on the East Coast. New anyway. York is dry. I feel like it's dry. It's a lot of finance, fashion, yep. tourism. Yeah, it's just like the creatives kind of got pushed out by yeah. The, and, r- the rent and the the Disney oh God, the Disneyfication. Everybody's always like, "LA is so expensive." I'm like, "Have you seen New York? Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, LA is like a penny compared to like New York is crazy. And the, the weather here, crazy. Like, the quality of life is much. Oh higher. my God! Like, yes, like the fact, like I, it's so much better here. I I love it here. I literally decided when I was on the Voice and I was like staying here at like a, like a Marriott. I was like, I need to move here and live here and I'm going to do it because I can't deal with seasonal depression anymore. 
I yeah, gotta get out here. I forgot about that till just now, but that's right, that, yeah. in, in Pittsburgh. The weather's kind of like Seattle. It's gloomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I get that bad, and I literally hear yeah. like I forget. About <laughs> Even season. here, it yeah. rains like <laughs> twice a year, and I'm depressed twice a year. <laughs> it's like I'm like I don't need like I don't need like I can't I can't with I can't do the cold weather, and so yeah. I love I love it here. And you're you're driving out here. I know that because you drove here. Yes. Were you driving in Connecticut? Yes. I asked this yes. because I lived in New York, so I didn't have a car then. Yeah. And I went from subway culture to car culture. That's rough. That's hard. I love it. Why is it rough? What, I feel which wait, like, which one's rough? Like going like the from, transition of it. Like going from not driving to driving. Wouldn't that be hard? Like I feel like I wouldn't be like like. Uh, are you used to it? Well, I drove prior to New York, okay. in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay, okay. And then and then I moved to New York and didn't have a car for seven years because I didn't need it. That would still be crazy. And was, then I got back. It was weird were getting you a rusty, car again. Though, like I, like driving, I'd be free. <laughs> a little bit. I'd be free. Like I feel like my I'd friends like... make fun of me for my driving is a little like suspect. I feel like it would be a little bit because I feel like I don't drive my car for like two months or something, and then I would, like get back in it and like something is off. Like yeah. you just picked it back up again. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm fine, but my <laughs> friends are always like clutching their seatbelts in the car. I'm not, I don't cause accidents, but maybe I get close. But I noticed when I moved out, moved out here, I talked to myself a lot in the car. Yeah. And I oh, I talked to my, I have interviews with myself in the car. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so, it's so helpful, productive. Like I, totally. we get lots of stuff done talking to ourselves, <laughs> like working through things. Sitting in like 80 years of traffic. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, always. And always. now I think like, how did I go all those years in public? Cause I obviously didn't talk to myself on the train. Yeah. <laughs> the subways, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I went all those years not talking to myself, and now I have so much time in the car that I'm, like, talking to myself. Yes. And 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 it's, it's so normal now, but it's it's really useful. There's something so nice, that, like, when you're alone in the car. Mm, I love it. Thinking time. Yeah. there. I, I recently saw... Um, do you know Jordan Peterson? Yes. How do you feel? Do you like Jordan? I literally, like, know, like, I need to see a face because I, like, know the name. Who is it? It's, like, a pol- it's political. Like, who is it? People politicize him, but he doesn't. I don't think he means to be political. But he's 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 a divisive. I literally. I, he's like on it. Like it's kind of controversial vibe. Well, right? he he's a psychologist. What's his name again? Uh, Jordan, Peterson. Jordan Peterson. He he's a professor at the uh, University of Toronto. Uh, he's a psychologist. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Not really a formed opinion. Okay. But I hear I, people talk about him. I I like Jordan. I like what a lot of things he has to say. But one of the things he's talked about is about he's he's really um advocating to protect free speech mm-hmm. and he he was saying that like when we speak speaking is thinking yeah like we we form our thoughts and we 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 figure out how we feel by speaking yeah like you and i are talking right now yeah and we realized some things that we didn't realize ahead totally but it was through talking that's like what therapy is too yeah like half of therapy is taught like 80 percent of therapy honestly like i just go on tangents in therapy and i'm like I feel so much better. And I figured everything out. And they're really like, just you can just leave the check over there. <laughs> I know. They're like, bye. They're, see you in the week. <laughs> <laughs> they're like booking their trip to yeah. Bali. <laughs> it's really is. It's like talking to yourself and talking through things. Yeah. Like, I totally get that. So we're going to, we're coming to the end of this. Um, I'm really, I enjoyed this conversation a lot. We had a good combo. Yeah. I love the head. I feel like I'm like on such a, I'm on such a podcast right now. And I also keep like... You literally like, are. Like, I, I mean, know, it's a radio show like, and a podcast. It's literally great. Like, I, it's so... And I'm glad you I say this because I always forget to tell the listeners. And after we record, I'm like, oh, I need to tell them on air. That they're li- th- those of you listening on Adobe Radio, mm-hmm. this conversation in full will be available yes. on streaming on Spotify and Apple in video, the video version. Yes. So you'll get to see the video version and it'll be on streaming after a beautiful this airs. Room. Beautiful room with a beautiful neon sign. Newly renovated. Newly renovated room. Yeah. So there's a lot to see. Yeah. And so after this, you're, so you're working on your EP. Yes. Yep. Do you, do you, how's that going? Or do you have an it's idea good. of when that it's, might come out? I honestly, right now, not really, but like, hopefully, like, it can't be much longer. Like, I'm honestly, like, I'm right now, I'm like, I'm on a, I'm on a groove with it and I could see it all like definitely at least like having like track list and recorded like by like the fall you know what i mean yeah. so it's it's in route and i think it's going to happen suddenly and unpredictably because i've just been doing it's very it's an artistic process yeah so but i'm i am also anxious to 
get it out. But I'm also not an independent artist, so it's like a there's there's a team there. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. So it's like a it's a thing. This is exciting. Yeah, it's this exciting. is awesome that you're. You, this is your first. <laughs> release i know it's like literally it's so weird that i don't i like people are like where's your music and i'm like I it's don't, coming it's, it's on like, the way it's coming <laughs> I'm trust me for like five years it's on the way it's coming but it really is coming yeah it's coming we're i'm looking forward to it thank you yeah thank you and thank you for sharing your songs today thank you so much thank yeah, you for it's... having me i'm so i was psyched yay this is fun <laughs> and you were our first live performer i know I love that i'll go down history I know. I hope it sounded. I hope it like sound like it sounded great. Yeah, it yeah, sounded good. awesome. Sounded just good. like I was watching on my phone Amazing. on TikTok. Amazing. Um, so those of you listening right now, check out Sasha Allen online, social media. Yeah. It's, and if you search me up there, this is what's crazy. There was another. There was a woman on The Voice. I know Sa- that's Sasha. That's Sasha Allen. Yeah, she was on, in Hair on Broadway. Yes. Yeah, so everybody, I shout out. I mean, she is. She's, I don't blame she, anybody if they're they're going to her instead girl of me. Can sing, she she can sing. busts it down like her voice is crazy. But you know, she she's she took my name. So what? How? Okay, we need to differentiate you two. <laughs> so what's your handle? How? Did, how my tell handle, them. Um, you can find me at on Instagram at Speak Now Sasha. Speak Now, as in Taylor Swift. Speak Now Sasha. Okay. Yes. And TikTok. TikTok is Sashi, but the <laughs> I and, and S A S H I E, but the I is a one. So S A S H one E. Okay. Which is like not a great name. I don't know why. It's it stuck though. It's stuck. So you can find me there. And on Twitter, I'm also Speak Now Sasha. And I have like YouTube and all those. Just search me up. Yeah. It's Internet Sleuth. They'll, you know, find, you. we'll they'll find, find you. We'll find you. They'll find it. Yeah. And and also, um, if you're watching this episode on streaming, we're gonna we're linked to Sasha in the description. Amazing. Yeah. We're gonna link to your 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 page. Yeah. I love that. All right. Thanks for coming on. It was a pleasure having you. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure being here. Yay. (laughs) All right, Adobe. We'll see you next time on Life Rhythms. Bye, Adobe.